Hello, everybody. I'm uh, very grateful to the committee for allowing me to deliver this talk remotely. So you can see, I think, from the screen that I'm going to talk about the nuclear enchantment of New Mexico, which is a epic poem. Um, it is a Jungian arts based research epic poem that um, was written in Albuquerque. Um, and I'm going to give some more details about that. Um, it is, as, as they say in the UK, it does what it says on the tin. It is about the, um, the magical and psychological and apocalyptic relationship between the nuclear weapons industry and New Mexico, a relationship that began in, in one sense with the first atomic tests, but in another sense, of course, it began uh, centuries earlier with the colonization of New Mexico. And in other senses, it began um, millennia earlier with the development of the landscape of New Mexico. And all of these things are in this epic poem. And as I believe I've said before, Jungian arts-based research is doing therapy with the world. It is a way to um, do Jung in the world. Um, and let's see how this works. Okay, so. The Nuclear Enchantment of New Mexico can be found in our book, Jungian Arts-Based Research and the Nuclear Enchantment of New Mexico. Um, it is, it was written in New Mexico. It is about New Mexico. It includes historical, scientific, ecological, sociocultural, mythical, decolonizing, transdisciplinary knowing. Um, and I will be showing a, a couple of slides to give you a sense of how that all comes into the poem and why it's important. Um, I haven't listed, this is not an exhaustive list of the kinds of uh, material the poem includes. It includes the, the, the myths of some um, native tribes of New Mexico, but it includes the myths of the culture that made the nuclear weapons. Um, it includes uh, the ecology of New Mexico and how that's affected by the nuclear industry. Transdisciplinarity, as we know, is a new vision of scholarship and thinking back to this being a, a conference of the Jungian Society of Scholarly Studies, a new vision of scholarship for a decolonized era. Transdisciplinarity brings different kinds of knowledges together without a hierarchy. It has a vision of a network of knowledge not a hierarchy of knowledge that we're accustomed to in the Western Academy. It therefore uh, respects indigenous ways of knowing, ways of knowing that uh, we may have respected in the past, like alchemy, but don't so much now in our culture. And it, transdisciplinarity has a really interesting link to Jung because in some ways Jung anticipates it. And on the other side, transdisciplinarity um, says very explicitly that transdisciplinary knowing has to be written in symbols because symbols um, are words that gather more and more meaning, whereas literal language has meaning that degrades as it is replaced by new knowledge, but rather um, transdisciplinary knowing is written in symbols very in exactly the same way as Jung defined the symbol. So um, this epic poem, which consists of um, 
40 double page texts was composed from the 1990s and was um, reworked in um, the 20 teens uh, to, to its, its current form in 2020. Cru the form is crucial. Um, as you all, all know, the form of a work of art is an important part of its meaning. And um, the what Jungian arts-based research often finds that a new form, a new or a, a experimentation of art form is needed to address the uh, transdisciplinarity of, of what we're trying to do. So I'm going to say be saying something about the form of the poem. Okay. So the form is the chalice. Um, what we find um, as Jungians is that in the power of Jung um, in many ways is in his diagnosis of what's wrong with modernity. And what's wrong with modernity is that it's taken splitting to an extreme. And um, in particular, the splitting of the psyche between conscious and unconscious um, which was never a terribly good idea, um, has become so extreme that it splits all sorts of other things, including knowledge. So the chalice is the way of bringing together that which has been split. And this poem in particular looks at the splitting of knowledge that is also the splitting of the psyche, that is also the splitting of the atom. And... Really, it's what the poem does is it's a kind of cultural fusion. So instead of a poem with notes, we have two types of writing. We have scholarly writing and we have poetic writing. And the two live side to get side by side on the page and they work together in the psyche. So para texts are not contexts for the poem they are inside the poem but also they point to what is outside the poem the poem is spirally not linear um, it doesn't tell a linear story because it's critiquing the linear understanding of modernity uh, the poem therefore is not in any such set order um, there are 40 texts. They are obviously printed in a certain order, but they could easily be printed in a totally different order. And it's interesting to reflect that this is similar to what we know of the um, original um, vision of the structure of The Handmaid's Tale. One of the uh, figures in the poem is Hecate, which is a, the poem sees as a possible way the the intense darkness of the psyche of nuclear weapons could be held um, and even ultimately worked into a better archetypal form for us so Hecate is 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 quite an important figure and when we think about the poem in terms of Jung uh, the poem is Jung signs um, on the paratexts show the the use of language as signs in traditional academic hierarchical knowledge, um, whereas the poem itself is that chalice form, the symbols, the symbols restory the psyche in touch with the sacred. That is what transdisciplinarity calls for, it is what Jung calls for, and it is what Jungian arts-based research does. And of course, Jungian arts-based research can be in any creative form, it doesn't have to be in words. So Jungian arts-based research, just a few words about that. Um, Jungian arts-based research is a new paradigm of Jung in the world. 
um, it's a new paradigm of Jung in the world because it uh, evokes the Jungian sense of the field. And I'd like to reference Elizabeth Nelson's fabulous paper um, that we heard last year in Asheville, which will shortly be published. Um, it is Jung in the world because it uses the Jungian sense of the autonomy of the image as alive, because it challenges and changes the archetypal psyche in modes and genres of art across cultures and over time, because the artwork, the artwork works to continually remake meaning as imminent with a touch of the transcendent. I think one of the things that people often don't fully uh, take on board about Jungian art space research is how it works with the existing world of, of art, how it works with the existing modes and conventions of culture. So I want to emphasize that. Okay, this is not a great slide, um, but it's really, really difficult to get a uh, one of the texts from Nuclear Enchantment onto a slide. So this is just to give you a sense of what the epic looks like on the page. On the left, you can see the paratexts, um, which are, you know, they kind of look like notes, but they aren't notes. They are both inside and outside the poem because we are drawn to them. We are drawn to read about Pegasus. Um, we are drawn to read the, the quotations, which bring in multiple voices, um, love, gasoline, prime ribs, burnt offerings. These are very evocative ways of putting um, this research. And on the right hand side is the symbolic language. And I'm just gonna read a little bit of this. Um, Americans fall for desire's fantasy of mobility, unleashing horses beneath metallic hoods, stretching Pegasus to hundreds of cylindrical feet while burning billions of barrels of love gasoline. That is such a contemporary thought but it encourages us to sort of see the connection between our obsession with speed and flight with, with this, this, this kind of mythical figure. In the rocket land, which is a real place, by the way, prime ribs sizzled, burnt offerings fried beneath a reddening sky. Darkness lengthens behind the brightest scientific minds who whispered of well trawn while missiles they designed rained down on London's population. These same men landed in America, joining ordinary people in ordinary towns, building rockets to the moon. The shadow of the myth of the terrified girl raped and kidnapped by a god into a life that let her down. Okay, okay, sorry. Um, gotta go back. Back, back. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna read from this one, but again, it's, it's to give you a sense of how it looks on the page, the, the revolutionary form that we're, we're dealing with here. Um, but to, in, in the interests of time, I'm going to end on the next slide, which is just um, an introduction of another um, example of Jungian arts-based research. This published in 2024, the third of my Mary One Walker mysteries. And whereas the nuclear enchantment of New Mexico does a lot with the genre of tragedy, I like to think that these mysteries are playing with the genre of comedy. Um, although this is the third to be published of the books, it is actually the first chronologically, and it it explains how the triple goddess detective got together, how Mary and Caroline and Anna ended up um, making a detective agency, and why. 
So I'm looking at Jung in the world through comedy. I think Jung is an essentially comic um, author and thinker. Um, the form, I, I now understand how to say this um, this particular subgenre in American. In um, this is known as a country house mystery, but in American, it's who gets the ranch, who inherits the big house and the land. That's the focus of this type of mystery, and this is a, a very twenty first century example of that. There's, it's it. What's happening in the book is a struggle between the patriarchal family and the new family, with a with an emphasis on equal marriage and also the shadow of the family in enslaved people. It does celebrate marriage equality, at least that's how I feel about it, and it introduces the triple goddess detective. So if you're interested in Jungian arts-based research to, to bring Jung into the world, remember the four Ps and try and spell better than I do, paradigm, preparation, process, and projectio. And thank you very much, everybody. It's wonderful to uh, be able to be here in this way, and I look forward to seeing folk in the Q&A.